it's like the Conservatives are just the Labour Party. It's just, they just fulfil Labour's agenda all the time. They've just been doing it for like nine years now, just enacting the Labour agenda. I'm really getting fucking sick of it, right? Harmful gender stereotypes and adverts banned, right? That's the feminist agenda. That's The only people who care about this are radical feminists, and they are insane. They are man-hating lunatics, and the man-hating lunatics are at war with the ones who are also man-hating lunatics, but believe that men can also become women. And the man-hating lunatics are like, no, there are always going to be men. Gender is a part of your biological expression. And they say, no, there's no difference. There's there's no biological expression, and your gender is completely arbitrary. Unbelievably, the man-hating feminists, the man-hating lunatics who think that the, the gender-bending lunatics are annoying and they hate them, they're actually in the right on that issue, right? But for some reason, the, the gender lunatics who think that men can become women and, and with no, it's just trans women and women, that kind of nonsense, they are actually the ones driving the agenda. And now, like, we've got to the point where it's like gender stereotypes are harmful and have been banned in Britain from adverts. So the picture you're seeing, like, is a caricature and a caricature of another country in, like, the 1950s. But, <laughs> like, that kind of caricature, that's been banned. Because feminists are angry. Really fucking angry. And they are somehow in control of this country. Who gives a damn if feminists find this offensive? Who cares? Who cares? I mean, like, I find this offensive. No one's going to be able to pick up a sofa like that with such little effort on one arm. Like, I find the lack of reality portrayed in the picture to be offensive. No, ban it. Ban it. Why? Oh, it's, don't worry about the gender stereotypes. Unrealistic physics being modelled in the picture. That's why. That's why I'm bothered, okay? <laughs> like... Why not? If I'm I'm offended by this, god damn it. You have to understand it's a point of principle. You know, like come on, why who cares? Why do we pay attention to these people? Right? But listen to this. A ban on adverts featuring quote harmful gender stereotypes. Would love to see how that's de de defined. Or those that are likely to cause serious or widespread offense, gender stereotypes that are going to cause serious and widespread offense. There are there are not enough there are not enough radical feminists in this... There are not enough feminists full stop in this country for anything to cause widespread offence. Or let alone serious offence. There just aren't enough of them. Like, 9% of the population. So, in any given conversation about this, over 90% of the country are just like, we don't care. We just don't care. This just isn't a problem to us. And then, 9% of the country sit there whining hysterically, and for some reason they get what they want. It's quite terrifying, really, given sort of, like, population demographics. The ban covers scenarios such as a man with his feet up while a woman cleans or a woman failing to park a car. Holy shit. It's over. It's over. Western civilization has fallen. I can't imagine what's caused it, because I'd probably get my channel taken down. <laughs> but seriously, though, Why? Why? Well, I'll tell you why. The UK's advertising watchdog, which clearly needs to be <laughs> it needs to be investigated in some way, like introduced the ban because it found some portrayals could play a part in limiting people's potential. How are you going to prove that? How the fuck are you going to prove that? Limiting people's potential as if as if the women who wanted this future, the women who want and it's probably more women who want the housewife future than more women who want the feminist future, just given by the demographics of people who say I'm a housewife and I'm a feminist, right? This <laughs> this the this potential is something that matters. Producing healthy, happy kids that are going to be the next productive generation. That's actually really important. It's not just how much money you make. There is actually a kind of human capital that you contribute to society by being part of a healthy, married family. And I know it's difficult to measure, although sociologists are probably well on top of this, but it's it's one of those things that's a lot it's a lot more easy to just go, well, but look how much women are earning. Hmm, maybe. But is that really good for the women? Is that really good for the men? Is that really good for society as a whole? Or is that just good for the corporate bottom line as viewed through a progressive lens? Just saying. Just saying that um, maybe, just maybe, it's actually not limiting their potential. And maybe... Being forced into a corporate office is limiting one's potential. Because I tell you what, man, when I worked in these offices, I worked in these offices for like 20 years, right? 
or 15 years before my YouTube channel sort of st picked up and I could do this full time. And man, I hated working in these environments because they're incredibly constraining. The rules are obviously quite tight. The, um, the, the inter I mean, it wasn't as bad as it was when I was there, uh, it, like now when I was there, but I'm sure it's a lot worse now in these environments with people on eggshells all the time because of me too. And I mean, obviously you just do as you're told all the time. It's complete conformity to a certain workplace culture and you just go in there, you do your job, it's boring, and then you leave. And thank God for another day. It's not, it's not something that I felt was in any way unlocking my potential. I felt constrained by it and i was thrilled to be able to do to work for myself like this you know for the future it was it was this is genuinely exciting to me whereas that was just i, I like i said maybe it's just me maybe i'm just you know i realize that not all people want the th sort of thing that i do but my god you know to, to say that being a parent and a mother is limiting your potential i think is very uh, vastly understating the importance of motherhood frankly. But anyway, how dare you put mothers in adverts with fathers who work, right? So, the new rule follows a review of gender stereotyping adverts by the Advertising Standards Authority, the organisation organization that administers UK advertising codes, which cover both broadcast and non-broadcast adverts, including online social media. They sound like they'd found evidence suggesting that harmful stereotypes could restrict the choices, aspirations, and opportunities of children, young adult, young people, and adults. And these stereotypes can be reinforced by some advertising, which plays an unequal part in gender outcomes. It doesn't have to be the same. It just doesn't have to be the same. It's different because they're different. There are differences, actual differences, and you can't just go from being a father to a mother. It doesn't really work that way. I know that it sounds like on paper when you're in the boardroom going, well, I mean, we could just have them to change gender, and then they're in a different, then different category. Then the numbers all come out equal, and so what the hell are we worried about? But that's not how it works. Like, there's an, <clears throat> there's an actual human factor involved here. And, like, even when you have parents who are at, you know, assuming you had none of this, right? You, you, you had parents, they go to their jobs, it's more likely that the mother's going to take the time off to look after a baby if the if the couple has a child. It's more likely that the father's going to work extra hours to bring in more money because he wants to be productive in his role as a provider. This is something that every evolutionary psychologist say, well, yeah, like, not very hard to work out why. It's kind of intuitive, really. If you're a human being and you have ever been in a relationship and possibly even have children, it's kind of obvious as a human being why you would do this. But... Don't let that get in the way of your research findings that have discovered that people being different causes une unequal gender outcomes. Why we should have equal gender outcomes is never explained. It's never given to us. Why, why, was it, why would it even be a good thing? I mean, women's happiness is going down, so you would think that maybe if we're going, doing a certain thing, we keep doing it, and the happiness keeps going down, maybe, just maybe, we're not onto a winner there. But then that's only because I measure success by human happiness. I don't measure success by the equality of the genders. I don't measure success by men and women working exactly the same number of hours for exactly the same pay and exactly the same jobs. Like, I, I measure it by how happy with people are in the circumstance they're in, even if it's not exactly the same as the person that the circumstance of the person next to them. I know I'm some kind of throwback in that way. Like the anti-bureaucrat, the person who lives in the real world, who doesn't just want to create a perfect thing where all the numbers on the chart make sense. Fucking hell, man. I can't wait until the world collapses and we are, we are birthed into a world free of bureaucracy. Oh, god damn. Just, you know, any time now, any time now, come on. Come on, end of civilization. Apocalypse. Let's, let's just fight it out on the streets. <laughs> Seriously, though, evidence shows how harmful gender stereotypes in ads can contribute to equality, inequality in society. You haven't shown that these are harmful, and you haven't shown that inequality is a problem, but apparently that's costs for all of us. For who? For who? Well, what? Who cares? Right? Put simply, we found that some portrayals in ads can, over time, play a part in limiting people's potential. I very much doubt it. I very much think that maybe what you're saying is, we're not. it's not so much limiting their potential as presenting a a positive view of the world that some people are interested in, like being a mother and raising your kid in this like nice, like, I, I guess you could say it's pro-parent propaganda, couldn't you? That's how you could describe it from your point of view. And like, the women go, oh, wow. I mean, I was, I was going to spend like 70 hours a week slogging away so I could become the top executive of my firm or I could, or I could play games with a baby. 
which, I mean, for me, I wouldn't slog 70 hours to become the chief of a firm. I'd rather play with the baby too, you know? Like, like all the... All the games and and like ad- affection and adoration that baby gives you, it's it's like it's genuinely wonderful being a parent, man. Genuinely wonderful. Like the first time your kid says just un- un- unprovoked, sort of like "I love you" to you, man. That you will never forget this. You will never forget it. It is enriching, genuinely enriching to the soul to have children, and I I don't see what the problem with that is but you know i again i'm not the soulless bureaucrat anyway stereotypes blogger and father of two jim coulson just some rando i mean i'm a blogger and father of two why why don't you get my opinion bbc incidentally but he thinks it's a good idea well that's interesting because i think it's a shit idea how about that how is that any any less valid from what we've got so far he dislikes adverts that per- per- perpetuate stereotypes about dads being useless. <laughs> well, me too. You know, maybe, maybe <laughs> it's nice to agree on that, actually. But it's not just adverts, is it? It's Western civilization in general, because we've got it running so well at this point, it's just assumed that the men are really doing nothing. Like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're all incompetent. No, they're keeping the world running. It's, they're so good at it, they don't need to do much. Anyway, it's the small things that build up, though. The small things that that are what inform the subconscious. That's the problem. The adverts rely on stereotypes. I really, I really don't think that's the problem, right? The 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 problem is that men are not being respected as providers. I would say, like, there's no respect given to the idea of of the husband and father as the provider anymore. You know, someone who goes out and you know through their own labor and sweat of their brow actually provide for a wife and family who get to who get to live in comfort. Like that's, I think that's a noble and honourable thing, and it's not just if a, a man does it. Obviously, if a woman does it as well, it's noble and honourable if a woman does it as well. But generally, it seems that biologically, men are programmed to do that, and women are programmed to look for that. Just saying, it doesn't have to be that way. But my God, that is a true, true aspect of life, isn't it? That is a true facet of life. Anyway, it's already pissing me off. Lack of diversity. As part of its review, the ASA brought together members of the public and showed them various adverts to gauge how they feel about men and women depicted. One of them showed a 2017 advert for a, a, pat, a tap mill baby milk formula, which showed a baby girl growing up to be a ballerina and a baby boy's engineers and mountain climbers. Okay, that's awful. Ban that advert. Ban this sick filth now. Who cares? A lot of it, more girls do ballerine, uh, ballet than boys. That's just. Oh, it's a cultural stereotype. Yeah, okay, it's a cultural stereotype. It's a British cultural stereotype that ba- girls become ballerinas and boys, but do you know, do it become engineers? It's a British cultural stereotype. Just get used to it. Just get used to it. It's just the way things are done. British cultural stereotype is fine, right? You wouldn't, com- you don't complain about this in like other countries with other people with other traditions. So why do you complain about it here? Who cares? Anyway. These parents queried why these stereotypes were needed, feeling the lack of diversity in gender roles did not represent real life. No, they do represent real life. <laughs> because if you look at the numbers, look at the number of engineers, you're going to find it something like 90% male, aren't you? 90%. If you look at the number of ballerinas, I bet I would look at, find it up at 90% women. What a fucking shock. Okay? It actually does. Who are these parents who are just talking out of their ass to fill in the progressive narrative for them? <sighs> anyway. I'm not going to let this wind me up, but this does wind me up because basically I do view it as essentially an attack on the family. And the family is a good thing. It is the basis of society. It is what society is made out of families. And these families have always historically been made out of men and women. And I think that when you start attacking the family, this starts peeling apart. And that's bad for the children that are still being produced. And they are still being produced. Broken families are not good for them. Not knowing their own place in the world is not good for them. And in fact, providing them like with um, a familiar set of rules that they can use to their own advantage when moving through life, I think actually makes people happier, healthier, and more secure. Now, obviously, the question is, at what point do these rules become tyrannical? We don't want that. But we also don't want a borderless, boundaryless world, because I think that in itself is bad for children. 